Greetings in the name of Christ our Lord and good morning. Welcome to our worship video for Fourth Presbyterian Church for July 20, no, July 17th, 2022. Uh, it's great to be with you. A reminder of our purpose, it is to advance the ways of God on earth and to help people create the lives of deep meaning and wholeness and peace they seek. We do that in a relationship with God through Christ and through the study and the practice of the values of our faith. Just a few announcements to make, not many. Uh, one is on August 7th, it'll be a day of celebration as Mike and Donna Fennell um, renew their vows as part of our worship experience on that Sunday. There's a meal afterwards. Uh, please sign up for that after uh, worship this week or next week or in the coming weeks and uh, let them know how many, how many to prepare for. And uh, we'll make sure that we celebrate their marriage vows on August 7th. A uh, reminder, too, that the choir is on vacation until, you know, they meet back up in September. So if you would like to share your musical talents, please take a moment to sign the sheet in the Fellowship Hall and then let me know when it's going to be and I'll add you to our list so that our worship experience is enhanced by what it is uh, that you have to offer. Uh, let's see here. What else do I have? The office manager is out of the office from July 13th through July 19th. So you should know that. And I'm taking a vacation uh, the final week of uh, July so be aware of that as well and I think that's all I have by way of announcements uh, one of my absolute favorite Psalms as a call to worship I've used maybe too many times I don't know but as we prepare our hearts and our minds to worship God uh, listen to this Psalm from Psalm 150 let's prepare ourselves for worship praise the Lord praise God in his sanctuary praise him in his mighty firmament Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us worship God. Hey everybody, welcome to Children's Time. I want to tell you a story about myself when I was in fifth grade. I don't know if you guys do this or not, but when I was in, in, in elementary school, at the end of the year, there was a huge music concert. We all got up there and sang the songs we'd learned throughout the year. And my teacher, when I was in fifth grade, came to me and she said, Tom, would you sing a solo at the concert coming up in the next few months? And I said, I'll think about it. And I went home and I thought about it. And you know what I thought about I thought about the ways I might mess up. I thought about how scary it might be to be in front of a bunch of people like that. I thought about me maybe failing, not hitting the right notes. And so I went back to my teacher and I said, no, I won't do it. I was afraid. So on the night of the big concert, my friend Billy actually sang that solo. It was a song called, You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. And I remember him singing it, and I remember afterwards, everybody came up and patted Billy on the back and said, wow, what a great job he did. And even as he was singing it, I can remember thinking, I wish I'd said yes. I wish I'd said yes. But I didn't have faith enough in me to do it. And I didn't have faith enough in God to help me to do it. See, here's the thing. I'm certain that night Billy was probably scared, nervous, had some fear, but he sang anyway. He went ahead and went up there and did it, whereas I was too scared to do it, and I regret it and have always regretted it. I wish I just would have said, yes, I'll do it. And so I want you to know that, that faith is not having no fear, and faith isn't about not being scared or not being nervous. You'll be nervous, you'll be scared, you'll have some fear. And that's what faith is. You go ahead and do it anyway. And God will guide you through that process. You will learn something, you will grow in incredible ways when you take those risks and those chances in good, healthy ways. Billy was willing to take a risk. He was willing to take a chance and it paid off. And I was not. And I ended up being the one who lost for it. I wish I'd have said yes. And so what I want to remind you of is this. The Gospel of Luke in the Bible, it says the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. You should believe that. 
You should believe that in any time there's a chance for you to grow and take a chance and do something fun and exciting like sing a solo in front of people or maybe play a violin or a guitar or a piano in front of people or uh, maybe recite a poem or even you know, give somebody something you've written and have them read it. Any time there's a chance for you to take a chance like that, take the chance. Believe in yourself. Believe that the kingdom of God is within you because it is. And then be confident going out there and have faith that God will walk you through. Will you be scared? Yeah, probably. Will you be nervous? Yes, probably. But will you get through it? Yes, definitely. And you'll learn and grow. In fact, it's the only way to learn and grow and to become better at something. You take a chance. You risk failing. I uh, hope that you'll remember that. I hope that you'll remember that God is always with you, walking with you through that stuff. And that you can have absolute faith in God to walk you through anything that makes you nervous or scared that you may be trying to do. But do try it. Take a risk. Take a chance. Have faith that God will walk you through. Because the kingdom of God is within you. God has placed those good things in you. You are a good person doing good things. Trust that. Trust it. And believe that God will be with you. And take those risks and those chances. I promise you it will pay off and be so exhilarating and so fun and you will accomplish so many things in life. Please don't ever forget that. Remember it and remember too to go forth in Christ.
We turn now to our scripture reading, but before we do that, as always, let us pray together our prayer for illumination. Let us pray. Holy God, we turn our attention to hearing a word from you as the scriptures are read and proclaimed. May what we hear lead us to continued growth and service in faith. In the name of Christ our Lord, amen. This week's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. You will know this story. It's the parable of the talents. It's one of the best stories, I think, that uh, Jesus tells. I, I think it's a good one. It's a fun one, and most people tend to remember it. So uh, listen again to these words from Matthew 25, verses 14 through, th through 30, uh, the parable of the talents. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. These are words of faith for people of faith. Thanks be to God. A man walks into a bar and he looks up, immediately sees that there are a bunch of stakes that have been nailed to the rafters up top. And he goes to the barkeep and he says, what are those stakes doing up there? The guy says, well, if you can jump high enough to reach up and touch one of those stakes, then all the drinks are on the house for the rest of the night. But if you try to touch one of those stakes and you fail, the drinks are on you for the next two hours. The man looks, scratches his head, thinks about it for just a little bit. And then he says to the barkeeper, now, I don't think I'll take the risk. The stakes are too high. <laughs> that's a bad joke. I know it's a bad joke, but I thought it was funny because that's the kind of thing that makes me laugh. So I actually started with a joke for a particular reason. One, I thought that was pretty funny. I like that. The stakes are high, too high. They're up there. I thought that was good. But anyway, I wanted to write a sermon about risk. And when I started thinking about risk, I made an interesting discovery about myself and for myself. I'll tell you what that discovery is in a minute. Uh, but what I wanted to do though was start with a joke because I wanted to talk a little bit about some comedians that I know. 
And I wanted to talk about the risk that would be involved in, I think, having a career as a comedian. It would be really, really hard to me, scary to me. Imagine having to craft your own jokes. Have you ever tried to write a joke before? Have you ever tried to write a joke, give that joke, and then hear it land flat? Crickets, nothing, nobody laughing, not a tee hee, not anything. Oh, it's brutal. The idea of actually being a comedian strikes me as one of the funnest jobs you can have if you're good at it, and one of the scariest jobs if you're not. It would be really, really a, a big risk for me. Here's some, some of the comedians that I respect the most, two that I'll just mention today. I respect all comedians because I think, again, standing up there to tell jokes you've crafted, that's got to be tough. But two that I, I think of on a, on a number of occasions. Bernie Mac was one of my favorites. I, I thought Bernie Mac was so funny, and not just as a comedian, but even when he was an actor. The things that he would do just cracked me up. But what I did learn about Bernie Mac, and I did a little research on him years ago, but I learned that when he started off, he started off by going down into the subway station and trying his material out on the people who were using the subs. And I thought, are you kidding me? Can you imagine how harsh that crowd would have been to try out new material down there, to run your routine on a subway? That takes a lot of guts in my mind. A lot of guts in my mind. Because if you throw out a bomb, man, that is going to be just, that's hard for me to handle. That is hard for me to handle. Jerry Seinfeld's the other one, not surprising. I know you would uh, not find that surprising. I will remind you of an interview he had on 60 Minutes with Ed Bradley, and I'll never forget it because he said something that really stuck with me. Ed Bradley asked him, you know, you, you've packed houses in, in small venues and in large venues with your comedy, your stand-up. You've been on late-night TV with your stand-up material. You've You've created one of the best sitcoms ever created on TV. Of, of all those things that you've done, what do you consider your greatest accomplishment? And Seinfeld's answer was this, that I bet on myself. And he went on to explain that when those days are tough and you're writing jokes and they're landing flat and when you're trying to become a comedian, it would be very easy to pack it up and play it safe and just do the thing that was safe and not follow your heart. But he said, I'm very pleased that I bet on me. And obviously it worked out for him. And not because of his wealth and not because of all the things that he accomplished. Really, it worked out for him because he followed his heart, his passion, his dream, what he wanted to do, what he feels like he was meant to do. And, and so I think, man, what an awesome thing to say, to bet on yourself. And what a great accomplishment. And I would agree, his greatest accomplishment. So while doing some research on this sermon on risk, which I, as I said, wanted to do, I discovered uh, a book called Risk. And I thought, well, I was actually at Panera reading and looking online and I found this book and I thought, well, I'll go look for it. So I left Panera and I went over to the bookstore and I tried to find that book, but I couldn't find it. I'll, all I could find was a book in the business section by the same title, Risk. And I thought, oh, this must be it. I go and look, no, not the same author, not even where I thought the book would be in terms of the section of the bookstore. And so I'm like, I don't know what I should do, but I went to the bookstore to find it, didn't find it, <clears throat> but did end up finding a book called, of all things, Bet on You. And I immediately thought of that Seinfeld interview. I immediately thought of that Seinfeld interview because I thought, what a, what a cool thing to say. He bet on himself. That was the risk he, he took. And then to see this face out, and it says, bet on you, how to win with risk. And I thought, well, this is the perfect book then. So I got it. I sat down and started reading it. Uh, finished it in a couple days. Liked the book. I highly recommend it to you. It's a wonderful read. But how perfect that I would find that book. It just seemed like it was meant to be that I should do that. So I read the book. And as I said, I recommend it to you. But I still had not, upon finishing the book, come up with a sermon until I made my discovery that I started this sermon with. And here's my discovery. Here's what I discovered for myself. Risk and faith are two sides of the same coin. They function together. Faith is how you take risks, and risks are a demonstration of that faith. They're almost 
the same. In fact, when I started thinking about it, I started thinking again of synonyms. Remember I made that joke last week about synonyms and cinnamon. And then George said something about Paul Simonin, the realtor. And so I thought, this is perfect. So I just got to thinking about it. And I thought, I think, I really think risk and faith are synonymous. They are at least two sides of the same coin. You can't almost have one without the other. Or you can't demonstrate one without the other. And I thought, that's really pretty good. Remember in the book of James, the book of James says, faith without works is dead. And in a way I go, it's kind of similar to that, that, that it's a demonstration. I'm not sure that faith without works is dead, but I would say that the two work hand in hand and risk and faith seem to go together as well. And think about it. Think about the biblical characters that we honor so much and that we read about all the time and, and, and we lift them up as, as great figures of faith. So I'll just start with Abram. Abram, before he becomes Abraham, is Abram. He leaves his home. We've heard this story a thousand times. He leaves the comfort of his home, and he becomes the father of many generations. He becomes the father of three great faiths. This guy steps out on faith, takes a risk and a chance, and is rewarded. Moses faces Pharaoh, and the Israelites are led to freedom. Elijah squares off against the gods of other prophets and wins, is victorious, takes a huge risk, though. Zacchaeus climbs up in a tree so that he can see Jesus. That's a risky thing to have done in his day, to run and to act like you're a little bit careless. That was a risky thing to do. The woman who has the, ble uh, the bleeding and touches Jesus' cloak, again, a risky thing to do. The disciples who follow Jesus take a risk and take chances. It is as if every character is taking some kind of risk, and it's their faith that we lift up so much. We lift up that faith because they had the guts to do it. This is how people of faith learn, is by taking risks. It's how people of faith grow. It's how people of faith succeed, how they live, how they accomplish. I was reading this book, uh, I told you I got at my high school graduation, uh, from my church, and there's a quote in it that I just absolutely loved. It says, to hope is to risk pain. To try to risk, to try is to risk failure. But risk must be taken, because the greatest hazard in life is to risk nothing. The person who risks nothing does nothing, has nothing, and is nothing. He may avoid suffering and sorrow, but he simply cannot learn, feel, change, and grow, live or love. Chained by his certitudes or his addictions, he's a slave. He has forfeited his greatest trait, and that is his individual freedom. Only the person who risks is free. I just absolutely love that quote. I've carried it with me for a long time. In it, there was a section that reminded me of the Gospel of Luke. I actually have a note in there that says, remember the kingdom of God is within you. <clears throat> and I think about that. And I think about the kingdom of God being within you, kind of like that story of the parable of the talents, that God has blessed you with certain things, given you certain things, some five, some two, some one. It's irrelevant. You have gifts, you have skills, you have things that you can do for the kingdom, for yourself, for your family and your friends. The parable of the talents is about risk. When you invest, you risk losing what you've invested. You could take those five talents and invest them poorly and lose. You could invest those two talents and invest them poorly and lose. But the master becomes angry because the one servant risks nothing. And that may be the greatest risk of all. To invest is to at least try. To do things, to risk, is at least to make an effort, is at least to try to do something. But this man takes no risks. He takes no chance. He risks nothing, and so he doesn't grow, he doesn't learn, he doesn't expand, he doesn't live a bigger life, he doesn't succeed. He doesn't accomplish. He isn't rewarded. Nothing happens because he took no risk. He took no chances. And in short, what that says is his fear clearly demonstrates a lack of faith. 
Risk and faith are two sides of the same coin, and he's unwilling to take the chance. He'll risk nothing, and one cannot grow without taking risks. Faith is not about certainty of desired outcomes. Faith is not about playing it safe. Faith is not about being in control and risking nothing. As I've said this last week, and I've said week and week and week on end, and as we all know to be true, faith is complete and utter trust in God. Take the path with heart and leave the rest to God. Take a chance. Take a risk on something. It is the way to grow. It is the way to learn. It is the way to accomplish, to achieve, to move forward in life, to become something different. It is to risk, and that is what faith is all about. Risking something, just like we described about Abraham, just like we described about Moses, just like we described about Elijah, just like we described about Zacchaeus, just like we described about almost every person of faith we lift up in the Bible. They risk something, but the reward is incredibly great. The funny thing is, is that many people think that playing it safe means they're risking nothing at all. But in truth, doing nothing is the greatest risk of all, as our parable clearly points out. One loses when one risks nothing. Joy is lost. Self-worth decreases. A sense of accomplishment is gone. Success has no chance. Fun flies out the window. Hope is diminished. Boredom sets in. And lethargy and lifelessness are a way of life. And at that stage of the game, you lose. And by contrast, in the book I was just pointing out to you, the authors say this. Study after study shows that people who take risks are happier, more successful, and more fulfilled. And what's our purpose statement? To advance the ways of God on earth and to help people live lives of deep meaning, wholeness, and peace they seek. That happens when we take risks. People find that meaning and that happiness and that joy and that purpose by taking risks and chances because then you are completely and utterly dependent on God. Because the outcomes aren't always in our control. But faith is. Risk and faith. Two sides of the same coin. If you want to grow your faith, risk something. If you want to grow in your life, risk something. If you want to move in a place where you maybe are a little afraid to go, risk something. But just remember, the other side of that coin is faith. So take that path with heart. Take the thing that you think, the path that you think God's leading you to take. Do the things, accomplish the things, try to achieve the things that God has set out for you in your life. Whatever it is, the kingdom of God is within you. That kingdom is within you, and so you can, in fact, use it. Use it in ways that may feel risky. But just always remember, the other side of that coin is faith. And that belief leads you to great growth, great happiness, great joy and fulfillment, accomplishments and things you never thought you could do. I think it's true not only as individuals, but it's true also of a church. When we start risking doing new things, trying something different, we learn, we grow, we become something different. And I'm pretty sure that's where God wants us to be. I'm going to close with a story. A young man feels lost in his life. He doesn't know what to do. Opportunities are available to him, but in his uncertainty about what is best for him, he finds it hard to make a decision, any decision. He thinks of being a writer, but he's not sure he has what it takes. He thinks perhaps moving to another country would be really fun, but his problems would just follow him there or wherever he decided to go. He ponders uh, going back to school. And finally, in frustration, he just goes for a walk. He wants to clear his head and think. As he's walking along, a bright reflection hits his eyes and nearly blinds him. He looks closer, and the reflection is coming from a coin in the grass. He goes and picks it up and sees that it's a beautiful gold novelty coin. One side of it says risk, and on the other side it says faith. He takes the coin, he puts it in his pocket, and continues on his walk. But when he gets home, he begins to ponder his life again. 
And all those questions start coming back again. And then he has an idea. For every decision he has to make, he decides he'll flip his coin for the answer. Whatever it says, he'll do. Risk or faith. And his life is changed in amazing ways forever. The Gospel of Luke says it clearly. The kingdom of God is within you. I'd bet on that. Next week's sermon is about winning, about what it means to win, what definition we give to it, how we know we are winning. But until then, I pray that you will take the risk you need and to have the faith you need to go exactly where it is that your heart is telling you to go. Because again, the kingdom of God is within you. And if I were you, I'd bet on that. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.